Frederick Buechner defines vocation as the place where your deep gladness meets the world's deep need. Reflecting on Buechner's words, Parker Palmer says, our deepest calling is to grow into our own authentic selfhood, whether or not it conforms to some image of who we ought to be. As we do so, we will not only find the joy that every human being seeks, we will also find our path of authentic service in the world. True vocation joins self and service. So as we speak of vocation, one of the things we're speaking of is that which every human being has from birth. That particular set of longings, passions, things at the core of our being that once identified, we can't not follow them. Palmer identifies this as authentic selfhood. We would also call this the Imago Dei, the image of God. Trusting that we are each uniquely created to reflect some part of God's image. A part of being formed vocationally then is learning to attend to that which lies at the core of who we are. This is the work of listening and learning and relearning what our deep gladness truly is. But vocation isn't simply about what's going on inside of us. It's also about what's going on in the world around us. This is what Beekner identifies as the world's deep need or for Palmer, that authentic service in the world. Because we trust that God longs for the world to function as a place of wholeness, a place of healing, a place of peace, a place that flourishes. We trust that any participation in moments of wholeness or healing or peace or flourishing is in fact participation in the work of God. So a teacher attending to the emotional, intellectual, and social development of a child isn't just being a good teacher, that act is a reflection of God to the world. And a nurse working toward the healing of a patient, they're just doing what they're paid to do. They are participating in God's healing, reconciling work. As a business person, invest time and energy to bring order to their company or leverage resources for the greater good. They're just being good business people or ethical employees. It is an act of participation in God's life. As therapists help create space for individuals, couples, and groups to walk through pain or dive deeper into the heart of dysfunction or discover new things about oneself, they are, in those moments, actively participating in the wholeness that God longs for creation. This is where we want to lean heavily into the Latin root of the word vocation, box, meaning voice, call, or summons. Vocation is the voice of our own identity, the voice of our context, and the voice of God. To be formed vocationally, then, is to learn how to pay better attention to who we are, what is going on in the world around us, and the ways that God might be active in both of those places. Put even more simply, vocational formation is learning how to listen. But this will never happen unless we learn how to be still, taking regular moments to reflect on who we are and reflect on the world around us. And we never arrive in this work. It is ongoing an endless journey of discovery, both of ourselves and of our world. But this is hard work. We are often so tired, too busy, and too overconsumed with work to ever be still. But this is our invitation to you. To take a few moments every day, step out of the noise, the busyness and the chaos, and to just breathe, to remember who you are, your place in this world, and that the work that you do matters. It matters to us, it matters to the world, and it most definitely matters to God.